Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, we come now to the last chapter in Ezekiel's mind-bending prophetic journey from Babylon to Jerusalem. And in this chapter, we have even more amazing things taking place. So listen carefully as I read Ezekiel chapter 11. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the gate of the house of the Lord that faces east. There at the entrance of the gate were twenty-five men, and I saw among them Jehazanah, son of Azur, and Pelatiah, son of Benaniah, leaders of the people. The Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are plotting evil and giving wicked advice in this city. They say, haven't our houses been recently rebuilt? This city is a pot, and we are the meat in it. Therefore, prophesy against them. Prophesy, son of man. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on me, and he told me to say, This is what the Lord says. This is what you are saying, you leaders in Israel. But I know what is going through your mind. You have killed many people in this city and filled its streets with the dead. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. The bodies you have thrown there are the meat, and the city is the pot, but I will drive you out of it. You will fear the sword, and the sword is what I will bring against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will drive you out of the city and deliver you into the hands of foreigners and inflict punishment on you. You will fall by the sword, and I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This city will not be a pot for you, nor will you be the meat in it. I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord. For you have not followed my decrees or kept my laws, but have conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Now, as I was prophesying, Pelatiah, the son of Benaniah, died. Then I fell face down and cried out in a loud voice, Alas, sovereign Lord, will you completely destroy the remnant of Israel? The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, the people of Jerusalem have said of your fellow exiles and all the other Israelites, they are far away from the Lord. This land was given to us as our possession. Therefore say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Although I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they've gone. Therefore say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you've been scattered, and I will give you back the land of Israel again. They will return to it and remove all of its vile images and detestable idols, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts are devoted to their vile images and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Then... The cherubim with the wheels beside them spread their wings, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the exiles in Babylonia in the vision given by the Spirit of God. Then the vision I had seen went up from me, and I told the exiles everything that the Lord had shown me. Thus ends this amazing multi-chapter prophetic experience that began in chapter 8. So the Holy Spirit, again, transports Ezekiel, but within the city of Jerusalem, he takes him to the eastern gate. He brings him uh, to the entrance of the gate. There are 25 men there, and one of them is named Pelatiah, the son of Benaniah. And uh, this guy is along with the others that were there, are plotting evil and giving bad advice to those in the city. 
So Ezekiel is told to prophesy against these wicked leaders. The Holy Spirit comes on him. The word of the Lord is um, that this is what the Lord says, you leaders of Israel. Uh, That is what you're saying, but I know what's going through your mind. And you will fall by the sword. I will execute judgment on you. Then you will know I am the Lord. For you've not followed my decrees. You've not kept my laws, but you've conformed to the standards around you. Now, if this was not wild enough, as he's prophesying, this Pelatiah, the son of Benaniah, died. Now, this is, remember, he's there in the spirit. He's not physically in Jerusalem. But in the spirit, he prophesies over this man and others. And the man, who's one of the leaders of uh, the city of Jerusalem, is struck down and dies. He, um, uh, he immediately dies. Ezekiel is overwhelmed. He falls on his face and cries out in a lo- loud voice, essentially, Lord, are you going to kill everybody? You know, this, uh, this is too real, God, this man dying. Now, friends, this is a very unusual prophetic experience from Scripture, and I've never heard of anything like it in church history. But in this particular case, he prophesies judgment over a man. He's not physically there. He's doing it in the spirit. So if you, if you will, he's, pro- he's seeing the guy, and the guy is re- a real guy. He's seeing real events taking place, but he's not physically there. He prophesies death and judgment and destruction, and the guy literally dies. Ezekiel knows this is a literal death. This is not some kind of allegory. It's not um, just a vision. This man has actually died. And the reality of it struck Ezekiel so hard and so uh, dramatically that he cried out to the Lord, essentially, are you going to kill everybody, God? And um, the Lord then gives him a word concerning future restoration of Israel. He says, this is what the sovereign Lord says, although I sent the people far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I've been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they've gone. I will gather you back from the nations and will bring you back from the countries where you've been scattered, and I will give you back the land of Israel again. They will return to it, And when they do, they'll remove all of the idols. They'll remove all of the vile images and detestable idols. Then he gives a a brief prophecy about the new covenant. He says, I will give them an undivided heart, and I'll put a new spirit in them. I'll remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. So this um, is echoed later in Ezekiel 36. And of course, it's an echo of Jeremiah 31. Uh, 31, where the Lord announces through the prophet Jeremiah, he's going to make a new covenant with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. And he says, after that time, I'll put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So this prophecy about the new covenant, when Ezekiel is overwhelmed with the magnitude of the judgment that's being poured out, the Lord comforts him with the future restoration of Israel and the people returning to the promised land and a prophecy about the new covenant that would come, as we now know, through Jesus, some 600 years after these events that are unfolding in Ezekiel's life. Next, in verse 22, the cherubim with the wheels beside them spread their wings, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain to the east of it. So friends, this is a continuation of the glory from a few chapters ago, leaving from the temple of the Lord. It moved to the eastern gate, and now it's it's moved out of the city itself. And sadly, the level of glory uh, that Yahweh manifested in Israel has not returned in all these years. We're praying for the return of the, the glory. I'm praying for the return of the glory. The chapter closes <laughs> with an amazingly uh, simple turn of phrases. It says, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me back to the exiles in Babylonia in the vision given by the Spirit of God. And so the vision then lifted, he says, and then he's sitting once again in front of the elders in his living room where he had been sitting when he was taken away. And so he tells them everything that the Lord had showed him. Now, I'm left to wonder, and I suppose you are too, what did the men in Ezekiel's living room or wherever they were see 
while he's gone on this prophetic experience. In other words, was this just a blink in time? Was this um, some kind of long duration where they sat there and he was in a trance? Uh, Was he physically taken? Remember, he said he was taken by the hair and lifted out of the room. Did he physically get transported to the city of Jerusalem supernaturally? We're left to wonder, and I can't help but think of those stunned elders. And then Ezekiel the mute comes out of the prophetic experience, and he's able to tell them everything that had just happened. I would have loved to have seen the look on their faces when they heard what we've just heard, and that Ezekiel was able to convey the magnitude of this prophetic experience. Once again, friends, almost unparalleled in Scripture, Zechariah experienced um, something of similar magnitude, different prophetic events. And of course, John in the book of Revelation had some mind-bending prophetic experiences as well that are somewhat unparalleled. Lord, we thank you for your prophecy uh, given to Ezekiel to comfort him about the return of Israel once again to their land and the fact that they would one day remove all the vile images and the detestable idols, and the fact, Lord, that you will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. We know, Lord, there's been a partial fulfillment of this with the coming of Jesus 2,000 years ago. Many Jews have received an undivided heart and had a new spirit put in them by your Holy Spirit, by the redemption and the salvation found in the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God. Lord, we pray that they and the rest of your people, Jews and Christians alike, would be careful to follow your will. Lord, write your word on our hearts. May we be your people, and may you be our God, now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.